Hi everyone and welcome to Sherry Approved. In today's video, we are going to talk about layering products, what ingredients we can mix and what we shouldn't. This video has been requested, um, not only in the comments below videos, but just in general, people have been messaging to ask, mainly because, you know, as we get more and more educated about skincare, we are adding a lot of new products to our skincare routines. Yay for expanded skincare routines. I'm so glad to hear that. But then a lot of times people are not exactly sure, you know, what can I use together? and they are erring on the side of caution by asking a question and doing research so that is fabulous so today's video is kind of to help with that process to just give you a little bit more information on some of the more popular ones that a lot of us are using and let's talk about what we should mix and what we can't mix The first thing we're going to talk about today is layering products and um, in general you know a lot of people say there are no rules in skincare but then when we look at the science of products we realize that there are a couple of things that we do need to keep into um, keep in mind or take into consideration so the first thing is in general you will hear when you have a lot of products look at applying from thinnest to thickest in terms of consistency so that's one of the general guidelines that can kind of help you when you have you know all your skincare laid out and you're trying to figure out what should i apply first so that's why you will hear for example after toner you will apply essence that's if you're following more of the k-beauty type of skincare routine and why an essence because essences are usually more runny they're more watery than serums so they go before serums and they um in, in fact when you go with tennis to tickets you basically help the absorption of your product so that's just a general rule to keep in mind um the second thing is look at your products in terms of what's oil based or what's water based so we all know that you know oil repels water so basically if you apply an oil first and then you're going to apply water-based products you actually reduce in the likelihood that those water-based serums for example will be absorbed so in general you'll find a lot of people talk about applying oils last as a kind of occlusive to seal everything and but keep in mind um, that as well because there are some serums that are oil based. For example, The Ordinary has some granactive retinoids that are in squalane um, and they also have an emulsion which is water based. So how you use them and how you, you uh, pair them with other things will depend on whether they're oil based or water based. And the third thing to take into consideration when we are talking about layering is going from lowest pH to highest pH. And I wasn't one that loved necessarily chemistry when I was in school. And as I delve more into skincare and as I love skincare, even more, I'm realizing how important it is to pay attention in school people tell your children that pay attention in school science is important it's going to come back and be useful at some point in time in life like right now so you would have heard me talk about pH when we were talking about um, the natural skin barrier in the last two videos and in general in terms one of the other things that you look at when you're layering products is you want to go from lowest pH to highest pH why because if you apply a more alkaline product first on your skin and then you go to apply a low pH product like an acid you're basically going to kind of render it you know not useful unless you wait a really long time between application so it's one of the things to keep in mind um, and if you don't know the pH of your products a little thing called Google can help you. There are a lot of databases now that will help you figure out the pH or you can actually test it at home with some pH strips. So let's get into what is probably not recommended to mix. And I'm saying not recommended and don't take these rules as hard and fast because some people, their skin may be able to tolerate. But in general, a lot of these are not recommended because of the possibility of create an irritation for some people that's one sometimes using them together may cancel out the effects of each of, of the particular product so there's certain products if you use them both at the same time you basically render both of them useless and then you just wasted your money because you applied some product and it can't really do anything in your skin um, another reason why some of these things not, may not be recommended to be used together because it will create redness or maybe over exfoliation you know all the things that we were talking about when it comes to sensitivity so that's that's why we were talking about in that video that sometimes we create the sensitivity issue because of the products that we use so um one of the things that is usually recommended that you don't mix together is vitamin c specifically l ascorbic acid and together with your acids the ahas and the bhas now i am saying generally recommended and i'm talking when i'm saying vitamin c i'm talking specifically about l ascorbic acid and not other vitamin C derivatives. A lot of vitamin C serums have vitamin C deri derivatives, which a lot of people do well with, and then there are some that has L-ascorbic acid. L-ascorbic acid is the one that generally tends to 
creates possibly a little bit of irritation and why it's because sometimes that vitamin c or l ascorbic acid could sometimes destabilize when combined with ahas or bhas and by now you all know when i say ahas i'm talking about glycolic acid lactic acid and bhas salicylic acid no that doesn't necessarily have to be the case all the time and that's why i want you to you know, listen to what I'm saying, but also pay attention to formulation of products because there are some products that may combine all these ingredients in one um, one serum or one product. And the reason they're able to do that is because they've done a lot of lab testing and, you know, all kinds of um, checks with regards to formulations to make sure that the particular ingredients that they put in terms of the percentages, how they mix them together, that they actually work well together. So that's why I'm saying it's not necessarily a hard and fast rule. But however, if you have a separate like l acid and then separate glycolic and separate salicylic, that's when you want to be a little bit more careful with how you mix them because the potential for not only irritation but destabilizing the vitamin C or the effect of the vitamin C is something that you want to be concerned about. The second thing, and this again has to do with L-ascorbic acid or vitamin C, is that there has been a huge controversy over niacinamide and vitamin C. And in fact, um, you all know that I, for my skin type, especially because I'm oily, acne prone, I've spoken a lot about the EVA, um, the EVA Naturals Skin Clearing Vitamin C Serum, which helps my skin um, a lot. I have been using that for probably more than four years now. It made a huge difference. And that actually... It's a vitamin C serum that has niacinamide. So a lot of people were like, how come? You know, because you're not supposed to use vitamin C and niacinamide. But that vitamin C serum actually does not use l ascorbic acid. It uses a vitamin C derivative. So it works well together. But does that mean that you cannot use l ascorbic acid and niacinamide together? Again, a huge question that has been floating around in the beauty community for a long time. And this is why it's so important to do research. Now, there are studies that were done like 40 years ago, literally, where they put l ascorbic acid and niacinamide together under extreme temperatures and over a long period of time and saw so that that combination created something called niacin or niacin. They, they call it a flushing of the skin or basically the combination or what it broke it down to, or what it turned into, created irritation on the skin or redness and tingling. They put those two ingredients together under very high temperatures, which will not be the conditions that number one, your serum is made, your serum is stored, and number three, the conditions under which you apply it to your skin. So you'll find like a lot of people realize, but well, wait a minute, I'm using elescopic acid and niacinamide together and this is not happening to me. Yeah, that's why. Because the conditions under which the study was done and then the results or the conclusion that they came to, in most cases, really doesn't apply to the serums and stuff that we are using today and the conditions in which we use it. Now, it is possible for a very, very sensitive person that it may create flushing. And again, flushing just means redness of the skin or tingling. And that may be why. But in general, and I raise the point here because it's one of the questions that I get a lot with regards to mixing vitamin C and niacinamide. So there you go. Me personally, nothing happens. You could read a lot of research online for many people, nothing happens. And I get it's because the conditions under which I was tested and the conclusion that they came to. The next thing that is recommended that you don't mix together, and this is the one that I really, really want to drive home. And it's the one that you would find, um, I talk a lot about, and that's retinol and acids. I use retinol and acids in my skincare routine, but I do not use them together. In other words, I do not use them on the same night. And you would find that if I put photos of my skincare routine, especially my nighttime skincare routine, I will usually say, so tonight is my retinol night. And you would notice that I use particular products when I'm using retinol. And if I say tonight is my acid night, like when I did my nighttime skincare routine and I was using glycolic acid and so on, I would not have retinol there. Um, the acids, the glycolic acid and so on those exfoliate the skin a retinol doesn't exfoliate the skin the way acids do but it does encourage cell turnover and cell regeneration so it's pushing the newer skin cells from below to the top together those have the potential to be very irritating to the skin when you use together now they are products again like i said they have formulated that the products and they've put all those ingredients in one it's usually because they are very low percentages and again it's how they have formulated that they've put them together but in general if you have a retinol and you have an acid my recommendation the recommendation of derms the recommendations of science the recommendation of research will tell you please don't use them together and that's why we talk about rotation 
Um, you use your retinol three times a week. You use your acid serums another three times per week. And the last thing with regards to not mixing, oh, this is not really about mixing, but something to just keep in mind is that, especially for those of you who wax, so you do waxing on your face, whether it's eyebrows, the, the uh, upper lip, or just your face in general, you want to avoid using actives, acids, retinol, that kind of thing from like at least a day or two before you go to wax and a day or two after, just not to create any further irritation. So let's move on very quickly to what you can use together, what's recommended to use together. And you're going to hear me talk again about these main actives like the acids and retinol because those are the two that a lot of people are using. And the first thing is that you want to use acids with anything that's hydrating or ingredients like hyaluronic acid, snail mucin, glycerin, because hyaluronic acid um, will attract moisture to the skin. Um, snail mucin is a humectant as well as glycerin. So because acids will be exfoliating the skin, pairing it with a serum with these types of ingredients um, will help to hydrate as well. And the thing about it is when you use an acid and you are exfoliating the skin, Putting a hydrating serum on top is the is so fantastic because now you allow the skin the full potential or the to be able to maximize absorbing that moisture. Same thing with retinol. So you'd find a lot of times when I use a retinol serum, I'm usually applying that and topping that with a hydrating serum. So again, the night that you use retinol, a, a hydrating serum is going to be your best friend. Other things that you can mix when it comes to your acid night or your retinol night would be ceramides. Ceramides are amazing at restoring skin barrier. So especially when you're using these stronger type of active ingredients, um, using a ceramide serum or a ceramide cream or moisturizer, especially afterward, is also really, really helpful so that even in the, the exfoliation process or the cell regeneration process, you're not putting too much stress on your skin to get that done. Something else that you can do, um, especially on your acids night, is use a serum with antioxidants. And when I'm talking about antioxidants, I'm talking about things like um, green tea or vitamin E or resveratrol. Those are excellent ingredients to use on your acid nights as well because they give the skin an extra boost um, you know just adding to the overall health of the skin and again especially when you use acids that uh, that's a great time for these more soothing ingredients or these ingredients that are adding something to your skin without being harsh it's a great time to use it because you know you're basically getting rid of the dead cells and allowing those free access to go in Another combination that you can use is peptides with vitamin C. And this one I discovered by trial and error because um, how many of you know about the, uh, the allascorbic acid powders? Because you can now, you know, be your own skincare genius and mix your serums. So I started to use a peptide serum and mix in my allascorbic acid powder. And I realized after a couple of days that I love the effect that that combination was having on my skin. And then, of course, a girl goes and, you know, does the research and realizes that's actually a combination that's recommended. Together, they create a great defense barrier for your skin. And, um, of course... I cannot end the video without talking about SPF. And how does SPF come into this? Because one of the best, best combinations that you could do for your skin is wearing vitamin C with your SPF. And that's why usually when people message me, I will always recommend having vitamin C as your morning or your daytime serum because you're going to be wearing it under, under your SPF. Together, the combination is phenomenal. The vitamin C is an antioxidant. It's going to help neutralize free radical damage that is happening because of all the environment and the pollution and all of that. And then you have the sun protection that's either depending on the kind that you're using, either deflecting UVA, UVB rays, or absorbing it and converting it together that's the best defense system for your skin during the day and it's going to help so the fact that you are using your vitamin c actually boosts the functionality and makes your spf work better so sometimes i will say you know instead of using your vitamin c serum at night which you fully well can because i i don't because i use vitamin c every single day and i use it in the morning simply because that combination just works and it, it is highly recommended um to use those two together so i hope that this video has helped um, I try to talk about some of the main actives that people use but there are a lot of other combinations that we could talk about you can feel free to ask questions or leave comments in the comments below and um, you know or feel free to send me a message directly and we can have a chat about it I see you guys in another video